Luxury Vinyl Click Flooring is an innovative new product available in the latest wood and stone effects. It can be a great way to achieve that natural looking floor. Similar to laminate flooring and its push-click system, it also comes with the advantage of being soft, warm and quiet underfoot, as well as also being splash resistant. What's more, installing Luxury Vinyl Click Flooring is an amazingly simple process thanks to the way it clicks together and the fact that cutting is easy too, with no need for power tools. This means that anyone can learn how to put their new floor together. Hi, I'm Jack, and for those of you that have just purchased your own Vinyl Click Flooring, I'm going to take you through step by step on how to install your new floor, as well as offering you a few helpful tips and tricks on how to get that professional looking finish whilst always keeping safety in mind. So, you're all ready to lay your new vinyl click flooring, but before we get started, there are a few things we need to go through first. Now before anything else, you need to make sure to leave your flooring packs unopened in the room in which they're to be installed. These need to be left for at least 24 hours before installation to make sure that they're acclimatised to the room's temperature. If your floor is uneven, then you have to make sure to get your floor hardboarded like we've done here. This will make sure that your floor is perfectly level before you start laying any of your flooring. Now in this case, we're using luxury vinyl click underlay which will provide that additional comfort and a professional looking finish, as well as levelling out any unevenness in the subfloor. With your hardboard and underlay down, there's just one final thing to go over before we get started. Luxury vinyl click flooring can expand and contract in hot and cold conditions, so it's vitally important we leave a 5mm gap around the perimeter of the room. This gap can be achieved by getting your hands on some spacer wedges of 5mm width. Like all the tools and accessories we'll be using today, you can pick these up from your local B&Q store. Not to worry though, this 5mm gap can be neatly covered up by the skirting board or matching floor trim, so you won't even know it's there. So now you're ready to start fitting your new floor, the first step is to work out your layout. Laying the planks towards a light source will make the joints less visible. Laying them lengthways will make the room feel longer. It's entirely your choice on what aesthetic you want to achieve. As you begin to fit your flooring, you'll need to wear knee pads as you'll now be spending a lot of time kneeling down. The next step is to set out your floor which is where you loosely lay out your flooring to see how it will be arranged and to plan for any obstacles like radiator pipes and door bars, which we'll go through later. Now we need to make sure that the last row of flooring won't be too narrow. You don't want to end up with a tiny strip of board at one end of the room. There is a simple way to work out the amount you'll need to trim in order to avoid this. If you divide the width of your room, factoring in your five millimeter expansion gap on either side, by the width of your planks, it will tell you how many panels you'll need and the leftover width of the final panel you have to cut. Begin by laying your first panel in the left hand corner. Remember to use spacers to create a 5mm expansion gap on the end of the panel and at intervals along it. If the panels have not been narrowed, the lower groove lip of the first row of panels needs to be removed carefully with a sharp utility knife. With your first plank in place, put the second panel of the first row tight to the end of the first one. Then use a wallpaper roller to ensure the two ends are connected correctly. Continue in this manner until you reach the end of your first row. However, if like us, you came across a radiator pipe when laying your first row, here's what you should do. First, lay the panel in position next to the pipe. Measure and mark the center point of the pipe position on the panel, remembering the expansion gap at the wall. With the panel on your workbench, use a power drill with 20mm spade bit or 20mm hole saw to cut a hole at the pipe position. Next, draw two lines from the hole to the edge, each on a slight outward angle. Neatly cut along the pencil lines and keep hold of the offcut. Fit the panel round the pipe and use vinyl double sided tape to fit the wedge offcut back into place. Finally, fit the natural wood pipe covers that will cover the hole and complement your floor. For the last piece, measure the panel to ensure a tight fit to the wall, not forgetting your expansion gap. To trim your plank, carefully score through the top layer with a sharp utility knife. Then, using your workbench or hard surface, apply pressure to snap through the bottom layer of the panel. To create a pleasing look, you need to make sure that the joints of the second row are not in line with the joints of the first, but instead form a staggered effect. If your offcut from the first row is longer than 30cm, this can be used as the start for the next row. Otherwise, you'll need to cut yourself a panel to ensure you can achieve the desired effect. Fit the second row as you did the first, raising the panel at an angle of 25 degrees so that it slides under the tongue of the first row and then clicks into place at the short end. Use a rubber mallet and tapping block to secure the long sides. Repeat this process until the last row. To cut planks to fit the last row, place the panel you want to cut directly over the previous row. Then, use a third panel and place it up to the wall to use as a template. Mark with a pencil the plank underneath that you are going to cut. Using your workbench or hard surface, cut the marked plank to fit it into place. 
You'll need to repeat this process for all the panels fitted into the last row. With your new floor laid, you can now remove all 5mm spacers and use matching trim or new skirting to cover up the gap. When fitting the matching trim, make sure you don't attach it to the floor, but attach it to the skirting board or wall. Your floor is now fitted. However, throughout the process, it's likely that you've come across a doorway. If so, follow these simple steps. With doorways, it is best to not cut the flooring to fit around the architrave. Instead, lay a panel on a piece of underlay beside the door frame. Then, place a panel saw flat on the board and cut through the bottom of the architrave. Then just use a wood chisel to remove the waste piece of wood. To finish off your flooring, matching door bars are available and can be used to join any two types of floor covering together. Now your floor is fitted and ready to go, if you're going to put any furniture in the room, make sure to use some felt pad protectors on the legs of any tables or chairs so as not to dent or scratch your new floor. Your new luxury vinyl click flooring will provide you with a stylish and natural looking finish that is soft, warm and splash resistant, meaning you are now free to enjoy your new floor without any worries.